Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today I am here with Captain Cody Dunn. And we are in his very clean office <laughs> over, <laughs> here at clean C <laughs> over here at Sea Star Base. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking about his rig, his getter done rig, and Cody's going to go through it and kind of show you how to tie it. We're going to use a different line, not normal line that he would tie it on, but that's just so you can see uh, what he's tying, how he's tying the knots. Yeah, normally we'll use fluorocarbon. I use 30 or 40 pound fluorocarbon line, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, them flounder, you know, they'll see your line if you use this bright stuff. I've seen some people catch them with steel leaders even though, so everybody has their own deal, but yeah, this is the get her done rig, so uh, are, are you ready for it? Yeah, ready. Okay. All right, so I, I usually use about a two and a half, three foot leader to start off with, and then I'll trim it to however I need it. So I'll go up oh, about a foot or so like this, and I'll do a, a double overhand knot, I'll go slow. So a double overhand is you make a loop, you go inside the loop, you do it twice. If you do it once, it's not as strong, and it breaks easier to me. So then you just tighten her up. I got it right there, and I take my hook, if we go through this big line, yeah, so there. And then I'll do a, poly, a Palomar knot, which is another loop knot, kind of. So you go through, you make a loop, you go through the middle of that loop, you pull it, then the hook goes through that loop, cinch it down, like that. So that's that part of it. And then I try to get it about seven or eight inches off the bottom. So I'll, I want my weight to be about right here. Then you can see how pretty that hook stands out there for when you're jigging. So we'll go to about right there. I do just a, a goofy, you know, three overhand knots on that so it'll break off easy. That way you don't lose your whole rig if you get hung up. And this doesn't snag as bad as what, if you're using a, uh, you know, the double rig that everybody uses that didn't have a hook on it. So it goes over your oyster reefs and your pieces of wood and rock and stuff. This goes over all that stuff a lot easier. If you use a double rig, it gets hung up on everything and then you lose your whole rig and you're starting all over. And that's the reason why I started using this is I didn't get that many bites on the bottom. And I think if you pull this over a flounder's head, he's gonna come up off the bottom. He's gonna get it and he's, he don't grab it by the tail like a lot of people think. He grabs the whole thing and then he goes and sets back up on the bottom. And then I count down three to five seconds when you say we don't wait that, that no, long. No, we really don't. And uh, and I reel down, dude, and I, I try to break the rod on the hook set. A flounder, this is what most guys don't understand, a flounder's mouth is solid bone. If you've got a treble hook, you're trying to get three hooks through that bone. A single hook goes through that a lot easier. But if you have a flimsy rod and you've got 15 pound test line and it's super, your, your rod bows, your line stretches, and you have no penetration, and that's the reason why all these guys are losing their flounder. If you wait two minutes and drink a beer or smoke a cigarette, like a lot of people say to do when you get a flounder on, what happens is that hook, that treble hook, goes down in the soft tissue of its throat and you catch the flounder. But if you have to release him because he's 14 and three quarters, then you've killed a flounder, you know, if it's, you're tearing up that tissue or his gills or whatever. So this literally, two weeks ago, we caught close to 100 flounder and I lost, at myself, I probably caught 65 or 70, and I lost one fish out of that many, out of that many hook sets. And I try to break the rod. I use a, a, it used to be a seven and a half foot flipping stick. It's been broke like twice, so it's like six and a half foot with a 40 pound braided line, 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon. And I reel down, and I mean, I, as hard as I can, you know, set the hook. And, uh, but that's it right there. I'll put a swivel up here, you know, I'll tie my, tie my, uh, my main leader to that right there. And uh, and I'm just jerk, 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 jerk. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just barely bouncing my rod tip. And this bait is just going up and down, up and down on the bottom like that. And I'm just barely moving it, but it's kind of fast, but it really works well, you know, and that's, that's what I've been doing awesome. for a long time. And I also seen you put a chatter weight on yeah, top too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I do use the chatter weight <laughs> some too. So I kind of forgot about that. I started doing that in the, the last year or so, but I'll put a chatter weight here on the end or a swivel. Just whatever, but uh, if you want to, we'll take it out to the pool and yeah. look at some action. Now let me let me ask you this, Cody. Yeah, if, sure. if, okay, a novelist person that's fishing for flounder. Yeah. What is a must do when they're fishing for flounder? What do you think is 
the most important thing or a couple most important things when you're fishing for flounder despite what kind of leader yeah. line or what kind of rig you're using what is the most important thing when you fish for flounder you yeah think? I, I think uh you know fishing bulkheads you know structure so their flounder are a creature of structure they want to bump their head up against a rock uh, oyster beds uh, you know uh, pilings but you know the any kind of bulkhead it seems to me the bulkheads going down you know the uh, the channel if you can find a good bulkhead even even the docks you know i've I went with my trolling motor and just picked off flounder off of each dock leg okay. over the fish, you know, in the channel. So a lot of people, I don't see anybody doing that, but it's a technique that can really work. I probably shouldn't be telling that, but that's a technique that really works. So, But there's even like all, bulkheads like in neighborhoods and the subdivisions mm -hmm. that like Tiki Island. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, when they're migrating, they're coming through there and it's yeah. the same thing, you know, and it's in the summertime, then it's, you know, uh, grassy points, you know, or any, any place that's got a ton of current flowing through, you know, if you're fishing the bay, you want that current flow, you know, they, they, they love that, they're an ambush predator, you know, so they're waiting on the bottom, the, the current's flowing over their head and they're waiting for bait fish to get, you know, washed through and so they can ambush them, so uh, smell is a big deal, a lot of people will probably argue with that, but that's the reason why a lot of people use mullet, you know, uh, tip, you know, go up tip with mullet, it has a smell to it, you know, and that covers up the plasticky or or you know fake smell that you have with gulp so smells a big deal I think and even I've read a lot of articles and talked to guys that's been doing it forever even clear water versus uh, you know dirty water in you know, clear water you want to use the more translucent baits you know like the, uh, the the new penny is what I always use if the water is you know two or three foot visibility and if it's you know darker then I'll use the you know the hot pink and the chartreuses and all that stuff and black even is a good color so it's, you know, but everybody's got an opinion about flounder. So I know there's going to be some people that's going to disagree with me, but I've caught so many flounder and I get guys all the time on, with double rigs on my boat and I outfish them all the time. There's guys that have fish with mullet and I'll fish this rig and I'll catch two or three to their one. I mean, this, I'm not being a bragger or nothing. I'm just trying to help flounder fishers, you know, yeah. out a little bit. So. And I remember you told me one time that, you know, one of the most important thing is where are the flounder? Uh, they're on bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's another point. Yeah. So if you're using, a, if you're in a boat and you're fishing in like ten foot of water, if you're using a double rig and it's a, a quarter ounce and a quarter ounce, if you're working it pretty fast, once you're halfway to the boat, you're you're starting to climb up in that middle water column, and the flounder are clearly on the bottom. You know, so you you either got to slow down or you fish a rig like this, and it keeps you on the bottom all the way. I, I bet I catch 50% of my flounder straight down under the boat. If you're fishing a double rig, you're fishing seven foot of water. So you're never, you're going to miss all them fish unless you're just actually jigging around the boat. But when you're coming back, that thing's climbing up in the water column. And so you're going to miss a lot of them fish too if you, uh, if you fish lightweight rigs. So you've got to be careful, be mindful of the, that fill in the bottom. And that's why I use a one ounce weight because I'm always in contact with the bottom and if you're not in contact with the bottom you're not flounder fishing right yeah. you're fishing so, for something yeah, else thank you for that yeah, yeah. yeah. you're fishing for sand trout <laughs> and ribbon fish yeah <laughs> but you have this is like a keeper a, yeah. a bait yeah, yeah. A keeper yeah. hook yeah so you that's, probably can't see this that well but yeah. there's it's a freshwater hook actually and that that holds your gulp on a little bit better than regular hooks and i've, I've found a couple of uh, hook manufacturers that have one that have a big plastic thing here, man, and it, you can't pull the gulp off of it. So it, I think it's I, six six cents. Yeah, six, six cents yeah, to make them. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And uh, I use them religiously. I just didn't bring all my stuff today, but uh, yeah, if you'll if you'll try that, it stays on the, on the hook. I mean, I, I think the other day I caught six flounder on on one gulp. On one gulp. If, if on. you use just a regular hook, you know, one, one gulp, one flounder. Sometimes, yeah. you know, so. So yeah, let me, for sure. Let me let me just cut in right here. When it comes to gulp, okay. So the other day I was fishing and I tore up my gulp a little bit. Uh, he wouldn't stay on anymore. So I pulled the pulled the gulp off and uh -huh. I put the gulp on upside down. I did it with I do it with swim mullet. I do it with the shrimp. I haven't put it in on sideways. Yeah. And it still catches fish. It mm -hmm. will still catch fish upside yeah. down, sideways. Not look goofy. So but. yeah, it's a little goofy to you, but you know, have you ever seen a dying fish? They don't swim upright. Yeah. So well, to the flounder, our rig. Yeah. You know, we're, we're bouncing it, you know. So even though it looks kind of goofy, it's still bouncing and jerking through the water, you know. So, right. I mean, it's constantly doing this. So like I said, we'll we'll go out in the swimming pool here in a second and and show you what it looks like and. 
It looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah so works. save your money if you you know hook rehook that that gulp again. Yeah. Several yeah. different ways. I haven't caught a flounder yesterday though. Two days ago with it shrimp hooked backwards. <laughs> I hooked it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. 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 I mean, the main thing is the smell and the you know the side of something darting away from them and that you get that reaction strike. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, Cody. We're gonna we'll go, cut out and maybe yeah. cut back in. Oh or, yeah, and you know these Danco pliers are pretty awesome. Those are those are pretty Danco pliers. Danco pliers. Real, real yeah. quick, you said one ounce, one ounce. and what size hook? Uh, this is like a four aught. So I I use kind of a big hook. I, I mean, your these flounder, like I said, they're they're solid bone mouth, man. And, and if you use a little flimsy hook, I, I straightened the hook out on one the other day and lost a really big flounder. The one that I lost is because of my hook bent on the hook set. So I. Uh, the ones that out the C sense is that the name of the hood? Six sense. Six sense. Yeah, yeah. The, the, they don't straighten out. They're very well made, thick. I mean, beefy hook, you know, and and uh, they they're not going to straighten out. And do you know, recommend so. a certain test line like yeah, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, I don't go any smaller than thirty or forty floor, fluorocarbon, just because my aggressive hook set. So if you get a cup. If you get a couple nicks in your line from flounder teeth or hold on, blister. hold on, hold on. Yeah. Now this guy's mad when he hooks fish. When yeah. he sets the hook, he's angry. He's yeah. talking about breaking rods. Yeah. You've seen. I've, the I've seen. Hook. I've seen. <laughs> I tried. I always tell him, "What did uh, they do to uh, you?" On, on a small flounder, if it's in like three foot of water, he'll come out of the water on my hook set. So yeah. I mean, sometimes they'll go over or land in the boat or yeah. whatever. So and then they're green and you can't catch them because they're they're flopping for a minute or whatever. And I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm a finesse. You, I'm a finesse. Hook setter. Yeah, but I like you're to. You're coming around. Though. I am coming. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working. <laughs> working um, on them guns. <laughs> and and a cool quick, quick question. Um, fluorocarbon line. Do you have a particular brand you like? Uh, I like Vanish, and I like uh, the, the what's, what's the pink again? The and also Seaguar. So who's that? Uh, Yoziri. Yoziri. Yeah, yeah, I had to look it up. I couldn't remember what. It was. So so yeah, Yoziri. Thirty to forty is what I use. There's going to be some people that says you got to use twenty. And I'm, I kind of go big with everything, 40 to 50 pound uh, braided line, big hooks, one ounce weights. I cover a lot of water, I fan cast, I fan cast and I cover and I cover and, and uh, man, it, it works good. And I'm, you know, if you don't believe me, come fish with me. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think you outfish I'll put, us. I'll put money on me. Four to, four, <laughs> four to six fish to one, to everybody I've yeah. seen. Yeah, so it's, I mean, the other day we had eight boats. So let me just see you how you're working on top, like just, and then I'm gonna get down. So you cast it. Do, cast it out. I even switch hands, it looks goofy, but I just. And you spin to get the slack out of the line, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. I just move it a couple inches, just jig jig. Sometimes I'll move it a little faster. Some days they like it faster. I mean, for some days I'll. I'll move it that quick. But guess what? At that one ounce weight, it stays on the bottom. If you're using, you know, a half ounce, quarter ounce jigs, you're, every time you jerk, jerk it, it's working its way up in the water column. Then, you know, some days they like it slower, but I, I fish fast most of the time, though. And you can just kind of, that's about as slow as I'll fast fish right there. I don't fish any slower than that. A lot of people just drag it. I don't ever drag it. I'm always, I'm always popping my rod tip. I mean, my forearms are done at the end of the day usually. Yeah. And I'm always always popping. I'll get to the I'll get to the boat, work it to the boat. When I'm on the edge of the boat, I'm still in still in contact with the bottom. And then I'll walk around down the edge of the boat. I'll come around the bow and walk down this side of the boat. And almost every time we'll get a we'll get a fish. And no, we we did. I mean, I've caught yeah, the last yeah, time we were out. I caught two times. right next to the boat. Yep. And even. There's only a few guys that understand this, but there is a thing called anchor fish. So, like we said before, flounder really like bumping up against stuff. And if you're anchored up in sand and the, the migration's coming through, your anchor is really good structure for them. So they'll bump their head right up against that anchor. So about every 30 minutes or so, I'll flip over to the anchor, work it a little bit. and. I've caught a lot of fish off the anchor. I know that sounds weird. There's a few guys that know what that is, though, I'm sure. I'm not the only person that's ever caught one. But, you know, you get hung up in the anchor and all that stuff, too, and chain and everything. But I do catch fish off the anchor <laughs> regularly. Anchor fish. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a get her done -ism, I guess, there, maybe. It's anchor fish. But, hey, I just wanted to thank Cody, you know, for letting me come mm -hmm. out and, 
and visit him here at beautiful sea star base galveston captain cody done all his information because i know a few people have hit me up about hooking up with cody or coming out and volunteer information is below in description all the links are down there i also put the links of some of the the gear that we use and some of the gear that he uses uh, to use and tie up his rigs but thanks thanks for coming back cody thank you for taking the time out it's a pleasure. Super, super busy day for him he's, he's getting ready to go hunting tomorrow so oh, i squeaked in I'm here going, i'm going killing i ain't yeah. going hunting it's kind of like an, i don't go fishing i go catching you man go catch, i go watching and recording <laughs> <laughs> but but thanks thanks for coming back don't forget to like comment subscribe and share check him out on social media as well check us out too hopefully next time you catch us hook it up thanks